हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस्ट वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Now turn to part 1. You will hear a conversation between a woman and an employee of a beach safety club. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning. How can I help you? Oh, hi. Good morning. Well, I've recently moved back here from overseas and I'd like to inquire about enrolling my children in the club. I hear you have a great program for kids. Yes, we do. Our kids program is called the Beach Skippers Club and it's for 5 to 16 year olds. Sounds great. My two are in the age range. What do I need to do to enroll them? Well, let me get your name first. Okay, it's Celia Hanworth. Celia Hanworth. Okay. Are you a member of the club yourself? Yes, I am actually. I was working overseas. in Germany but I always kept up my own membership I just have an associate membership great that'll be easy then now do you have your membership card with you mm, yes i've got it here and the number is ch807389991 I'll just look you up on the computer. Yes, C H H zero seven three eight nine nine one. Celia Hanworth, here you are.、Uh, are you still at the same address? No, actually, we've moved. We're now at Unit Seven A, Number Eight Three Five, New Market Road, Bowen Harbour. Oh yeah, I know it. That's the new apartment building, isn't it? Number eight three five, you said. Yes, I work at Newmarket Business Park, so it's very convenient. Yes, it must be. Now then, how many children would you like to enrol? Two, actually. I have a girl called Kim. She's six, and then there's my son Damien, who's twelve. Okay. Now, have you thought about the kind of membership you want?、Mm, looking at your leaflet here. I can see there's the social or the competition membership. Well, I think I should put them in for the social membership. I don't think they have enough experience for the competitions yet because they didn't get to the beach much in Germany. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. Okay. Now let's just get some background about their swimming level and other sports. 
Have they taken any lessons and won any badges for swimming and water safety? Yes, they're both what I would describe as competent swimmers. They've both taken the water safety course and Kim reached the intermediate level. She's very proud of that. She's only six after all. And Damien reached the advanced level and then he went on to the water survival course and reached level three in that. Hmm, great. Well, they should both be okay. They've got the basics at least. Now, have they had any experience of water sports generally? Any surfing or kayaking? Mm, they have done some sailing. They used to sail small boats on a lake in Germany. But it's not the same as the ocean, is it? No, it's different when the waves are a bit bigger and there are tides to contend with. Are they into any other sports? Yes, they both go to Athletics Club at Newton Park. Kim has won a few events in her age group, like the long jump and so on. Damien used to be quite good too, but he's been suffering a bit with asthma, so he hasn't done so well recently. Oh, poor thing. Yes, I was going to ask you about medical conditions. I'll just note that down. So, Damien, uh, what should I write? Mild? Chronic? Oh, it's just mild asthma, really. The swimming seems to help with it. OK, that's everything. Oh, just one more thing. I assume English is spoken at home. We like to know if the kids have any other languages or cultures in their home life. Sure. Well, we use English mostly, but they both speak some Arabic as well, because my husband's from Lebanon, you know. OK, got that. Well, that's all now. So you can bring them on Saturday 21st at 9 in the morning and we'll do a quick check on their swimming ability. Oh, and you can fix up the fee then. It'll be $160 for both of them. Oh, actually we can't come this Saturday. How about next Saturday? That's March 28th. OK, great. I'll put you in for next Saturday. We'll look forward to meeting Damien and Kim. Thanks. They're so looking forward to it. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a talk by a staff member of a wildlife park to people visiting the park. Before you start listening, you have 30 seconds to look at questions 11 to 14. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rockdale Wildlife Park. We want you to enjoy your time with us at the park today, so let me give you some information before we begin the tour so you can make the most of your day here. First of all, as today is Friday, let me remind you that the park closes at 5 o'clock this afternoon, so make sure you've seen everything by then. I always let visitors know this as we don't close until 6 o'clock on Saturdays and Sundays. Now, entrance to the park is $18 for adults, $12 for children and pensioners, and we have a special family rate of $50.
We also offer small group tours of the park led by a guide for an extra $3. Included in the price are our daily animal shows starting with the bird show at 10 every morning followed by kangaroo feeding at midday. Then at 2 o'clock it's a talk about koalas by one of our staff. She'll tell you everything you need to know about those famous Australian animals. If you need a break from the wildlife at any time during the day, we have plenty to offer. Our cafe serves delicious snacks and meals, and if you have brought your own, there's a large picnic area under the trees. There's also a playground for the kids and gift shop for souvenirs. I'd also like to take this opportunity to mention our Friends of the Park membership. For $50 a year, members receive a newsletter notifying them of park news and any upcoming special events. What is more, you'll get 10% off entrance fees and a voucher from the gift shop. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 15 to 20. Now, let me tell you where everything is. From the ticket office, take the path past the pond. The first enclosure you'll come to at the end of the path is the reptile enclosure. It houses small and large lizards and also some of Australia's deadliest snakes. Next to the reptiles, towards the highway, are Australia's biggest birds, the emus. Right near that, between the emus and the ticket office, is our new children's playground. It's fully fenced and shady, and is a great place to take a break with the kids. Another good place for families is the picnic area, which is under the trees next to the river. It's lovely and peaceful, which is why our koala exhibit is nearby. Also, don't miss the nocturnal animals, which are right next door to the koalas. The special lights allow you to watch the native marsupials running around. Now the largest enclosure is for the kangaroos, which need lots of space to hop around. Their area goes from the river right across to the car park. And at the end of the day, don't forget our fantastic gift shop next door to us here at the ticket office. It's got postcards, pens, stuffed animals, all kinds of great gift ideas. Finally, just a couple of points I need to mention today. Firstly, unfortunately the emu exhibit is closed temporarily. Don't worry, they're not sick. In fact, it's good news. Some baby emus have just hatched. The chicks are healthy, but we want to give them some privacy. So we're waiting a while until we decide whether we should move the mother and babies to their own enclosure or not. They're five days old, and although we would normally only wait a week before allowing the public to see them, we've decided to close it for two weeks. Now our most popular exhibit is always the kangaroos, so make sure you get down there as you are allowed to walk through that particular part of the park and get close to the animals. Don't forget the feeding show at midday when a member of our staff lets a few visitors feed the kangaroos by hand. Tell your guide if you'd like to do this and they'll let staff know who you are. I should also mention other good times to see the kangaroos. They're often active in the morning, but we're already a bit late for that, so if you happen to still be in the park near closing time, go and take a look, because just before the sun goes down is the best time to see them. Finally, children who have been to the park before often ask me what happened to the huge old playground that we used to have. Unfortunately, we had to get rid of the old wooden one because it was outdated, and frankly, a little bit dangerous. The new plastic modern one might not be as original and interesting as the old one was, but children still seem to enjoy it. So everybody, I hope you enjoy your day at the park with us, and if you have any questions, please speak to a member of staff. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two.
Part three. You will hear a student, Penny, talking to two friends, Ray and Louise, about a television competition Ray has entered called Travel Documentary. Before you hear the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, haven't seen you two in ages. What have you been up to? Hi, Penny. Ray is really excited. He's just been shortlisted for travel documentary. He could be off travelling around the world for three months. Travel documentary? What's that? You've never heard of it? Don't you watch TV? Well, actually, no, hardly ever, especially since I've started working on my thesis. I don't have time to breathe, let alone watch TV. So what's this all about, Ray? Well, actually, it, it's a competition run by public TV. It involves my two great loves, travel and filmmaking. Is it that program where people are sent around the world making documentary videos? I have heard of it. Fantastic! So you've been chosen? Not yet. I'm one of 34 selected for an interview next week, so I've made it through the first cut. Yeah, there were over 200 applicants from around the country. Pretty amazing, hey? Well, I've been lucky so far. What's the next stage? Thirteen are chosen from the interview to do a four-week training course in documentary filmmaking. Then, the eight finalists get sent off with a video camera to travel around the world. Sounds incredible. What's the catch? The catch is that every two weeks, you have to send in a ten-minute video from a different part of the world. It's broadcast on TV along with the work of three of the other competitors and judged by a panel of experts and the TV audience. So you're under a lot of pressure. Wow, I guess so. You mean you're on television every two weeks? Yep, that's right. But first, I have to be selected. Do you have to have any filmmaking experience to apply? Some background in photography or video making helps. But you're not supposed to be an expert. In fact, you can't apply if you've already worked in filmmaking. We all get the same four-week course, so we start with the same skills. Can you go anywhere in the world you want? Each competitor makes up his or her own travel plans and has to get them approved. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions 27 to 30. Have you talked with anyone else who has done it? As a matter of fact, just last week, I met Sarah Price, a girl from here who did it last year. What did she have to say about it? She said it was the most amazing experience of her life, but it was really tough at times. I think you'd have to be really brave to take off like that alone with so much responsibility. It's not like going on a holiday, is it? No. Two weeks in a country often where you can't speak the language to find a story, film it, organise all the editing. Then you're off to a completely different part of the world to start all over again. Pretty exhausting, but exciting too. What a way to see the world. What about Sarah Price? Did she have any bad experiences? She said the worst part was when she got some mysterious fever in Mongolia and thought she might have to be sent home. 
Fortunately, it got better, but she said it was scary to feel really ill when you're alone so far away. So what made you want to apply? When I saw the program on TV a while ago, I thought, this is for me. I've always wanted to travel, but needed to work for a year before I could even think about it. Then a new series started up. I thought, now's my chance. Don't you think you'll be lonely? I don't think I'll have time to be homesick. I'm more worried about having too much to do and not enough time to get things organised. So we might be watching you on television in the next few months? I hope so, if I'm lucky. When will you know for sure? They choose the final eight in March. A month later, you're on your way. So do you have to pay anything? Nothing. It's all paid for. Course, camera, flights, accommodation and in-country travel. The budget is pretty tight, though. No extras. I sure hope you get it. Then I'll be finding time to watch at least one program on television every week. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4. You will hear a talk about new materials based on spider silk. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for inviting us today. As you know, I work as a senior materials researcher for FutureMat. My colleague Frank and I are here today to interest you in getting in at the beginning of an exciting new branch of material science, synthetic spider silk. You've all seen spider webs and spider thread or silk as we call it. Now, some of you might not like spiders, but believe me, they all have their own technology, which we're only now beginning to understand. Now, you're here as investors. Well, we firmly believe that the production processes we're developing based around the properties of spider silk have the potential to revolutionize a number of industries. For example, textiles, cosmetics, leisure equipment industries, and even some fields in automotive and aerospace. The interesting thing is that the multinational companies, even the household names you all know, have invested millions in trying to develop synthetic spider silk into commercial products, but basically have given up on it. So it's been left to the smaller startup companies like ours to continue the work. We may not have the resources to scale up to commercial products just yet, but we and a couple of our competitors have made some breakthroughs in the production processes. And we're sure that will interest the major companies in buying our patents. So let's get into some specifics. People have known for many years 
that weight for weight, spider silk is incredibly strong and tough, which has led to all this interest by material scientists. Now, strong and tough are not the same thing, because we define strength as the weight a material can bear, while toughness is a measure of the energy it can absorb before it breaks. It may surprise you that some types of spider silk are five times stronger than steel. And you know, those bulletproof vests that are worn by the riot police and security forces? They're made of Kevlar, which is a tough man-made fiber. Well, spider silk is lighter, but could be three times as tough. It's important to note that real spider silk is a complex protein but we now understand a lot about its amino acid structure. I won't bore you with the details, but it mainly consists of repeated glycine and alanine chains. Now, this protein structure gives it other interesting applications which have excited medical companies, particularly producers of external wound dressings and patches. And that is because it has antimicrobial properties and is not rejected by human tissue. So infection rates can be reduced in accident victims. And thinking far ahead, another medical application is in replacements for human tendons or ligaments, you know, as parts within artificial limbs or human joints, where flexibility is crucial. And finally, in construction, clearly there are a lot of uses for lighter, stronger cables linking machine parts, supporting or lifting items. So, you're probably wondering how the silk is produced. You might think it could be taken from wild spiders themselves. So to give you an idea of how long that can take, a piece of fabric about 3 to 4 meters took 82 people over four years to create. And clearly, it won't be from farm spiders. These creatures are far too aggressive towards each other. They can't be kept in close proximity in large numbers. So, the only way is to artificially produce the proteins in a kind of sticky liquid which can be made into very thin fibers. One approach to this has been to genetically modify goats which then produce this silk in their milk. The protein content of the milk is about one or two grams per liter of milk. So you need a lot of it to get a quantity of protein. But it has been done. Although extracting the protein isn't really such a tricky process. Um, another approach has involved the genetic modification of an obvious candidate, the silkworm. But again, the quantities produced are insufficient. The resultant materials are very suitable for medical applications, though. These days, it seems, a more reliable and very importantly scalable method is to directly modify bacteria, such as the E. coli bacterium, to produce the proteins in liquid form. There are a number of companies, and this is where we come in, working in this field. So we've shown you that it is indeed scalable. There are definitely some issues in going from raw proteins to usable silks, but the quantity is there. So now we've got the background, let's have a look at our proposals in more detail. Frank, could you start the video, please? That is the end of part four. You would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking you cut guesswork. Please guys participate in every day new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, 
then please join my telegram channel so guys please write your score below the comment section again thanks for listening god bless you all guys stay tuned stay safe